Hello, this is episode one of Hermit Crab Talk, and we're here today with Giant, Spot, and Camouflage. Today, we're going to be talking about the basic needs of a hermit crab. First thing you need for a hermit crab is you need a small house. In this case, I have this house, and my hermit crabs are inside of it right now. You need food. This is my food. You need water. And you need salt. Hermit crab approved salt. For any, if you want to, you normally have two water bowls, so you can put salt in one. And sometimes, if you want to be really nice, you can get a dessert that you can mix in with the food. But today, I'm going to be talking about the basic needs. And some of the basic needs that you need is food and how you should look for food. I have this food because it has coconuts and most hermit crabs like coconuts and peanut butter. I use this because I don't really know why my hermit crabs like this. But the Pet Crow brand is a really good brand if you're getting desserts. In this case, cookies. And salt. Um, I use this for in this case. I just used HBH, same as my food. When you ever use um hermit crab products, HBH is a really good one. You cannot. So that's one. I also have some HBH water cleaner. So I use that. You also need, when you're taking care of your hermit crabs, you always need fresh water. I have it over here in the corner. And with you, you, you clean fresh water, you always use tap water, and then you clean it with a cleaner. You never use distilled water because it has no vitamins, and your hermit crabs need lots of vitamins to be safe, and they, and they also need exercise. That's the second thing I'm going to tell you about. For in this case... Exercise, I'm just letting them walking around in this little house on my little board. And whenever you're doing exercise, never do exercise on carpet like this or any type of carpet you have. Because when you have carpet like this or other types of carpet, this is the main kind. All these little strands of hair can collect different um, cleaners, like different types of... Um, like, I don't know if your parents use, like, different sprays to make your room smell good. Those sprays might be smelly for humans, but hermit crabs can die from them. And with all those little strands of hair, when the sprays settle, all the um, different cleaners and stuff that makes the air smell good settle into the carpet. And it, and it can't come out with vacuums, but it's so microscopic it only hurts hermit crabs. So that's one thing. Another thing is you need to play with your hermit crabs on a daily basis or just give them attention. And another thing is here. There you go. Another thing is never hold your hermit crabs by their legs or their arms if you are playing them with them because that'll take their arms off. Like come back here. If you use here, I need to get a good shot. Never hold any of these arms or that big purple claw. If you ever hold one of those, it might come off. I know some people that hold them by the back, but that's extremely difficult, so never do that unless you've been taught how to, how to hold them from the back. And some are so small you can't even hold them from the back. Now another thing is, you might have a hermit crab that pinches people or refuses to go on the ground. A way to help that is if you have a hermit crab that doesn't like to go on the ground, hold him right above the ground like this until his arms come out and let his toenails touch. And then as soon as they let their toenails touch, slowly let them down and that will allow them to get used to the area. So if you get them used to an area like if you have a little cage inside or outside, you can um, 
get them ready for their cage, and once they get used to it, normally they'll go on their cage really nicely and walk around once they get used to it after a while. Uh, after, now I'm going to talk about their basic cage needs. So, I take my camera over here. This is my cage. As you can see, I have two water bowls. One I put that salt in, and one is fresh water. Normally you would put the salt in the bigger cage, the bigger water bottle that you, well, little, I don't know what those are called, saucers of water. The bigger one, the smaller one you put the tap water in because they like to play in the salt water and it would be kind of hard to play in that little purple dish back there, but they only drink out of that. You always need something for them to crawl under. In this case I have two things, I actually have a big water bottle that's kind of brownish so they like to go under that sometimes. And I have that um, piece of bark that they like to go under. Next thing you need is you need um, a food bowl. I have my food bowl in the back. I have, I have some, <clears throat> and sometimes in your food bowl you should put like handmade food, like a little salad that you chopped up, a mini salad. You also need like little play toys or shells that they can go in and out. So I have a little ladder I made and a bunch of shells. And then you always need a, like a little home for them to go into. And in this case, my home isn't there because it's over there on my board. Get back on there. Another thing you need is... <clears throat> I. Some people do this, some people don't. But you need deep sand parts, like dunes. Like one peop some people put like low sand, like over here. I have lower, and then over here it gets higher. Or some people have their sand come all the way up to here, like a sand dune. Because some hermit crabs, land hermit crabs, like to bury in sand dunes. But my hermit crabs don't, so I leave it at just a little low amount of sand. Sorry, I should put my hermit crabs back in the cage. Hold on, I'm almost done. Okay, now you can see, now that I have my little house, uh, my stuff put back in. I don't know where they went. Did they go somewhere? There's one in the background, see? But they like to crawl around on the water bowls. And sometimes they go underneath that log, but I don't see them going underneath the log at the moment. <clears throat> Normally when you have a hermit crab, you always do need quite a bit of sand. Like I said, sand dunes. But some people do that, but you always need, there's a guarantee amount that you have to have. You have to take your hermit crab, the biggest hermit crab you have, which is this one right here, giant. And you have to hold them right there, right next to the sand. And there has to be enough where they bury the, where they can bury themselves completely. And in this case, I do. I have them just enough. Now, next thing you need to do is you need hermit crab bathing areas. Normally, they can go in their water bowls and they bathe by themselves. But every once, like a month, I do mine about once every two months. It depends on what you do. You need a small cage or bowl. I use a cage. You need your hermit crab um, spray that can like purify the water. And you need the salt that I also showed. Now these are two mixtures are good for bathing. And you also need the container with the towel. So what I do is when I'm doing it, I take my container. If it has a lid, you of course you have to take off the lid. You don't want them to suffocate. You take your container, you fill it out up to about just enough to cover the hermit crab, but but still enough where their eyes can come out of the water so they can breathe. You put about just a little bit of this. And you still want to. You still want to um, just a little bit, 
Like, you put a little bit more for drinking water, but they're bathing, so you don't have to use as much as the label says. Then you need to give a little extra salt, because that can help with their bones. And you take the crab. As you take the crab, you need to hold it right next to the water. And you put them down sideways. I'm waiting for this guy to come out. There he goes. You put them down sideways like that. And you kind of hold them there, and that will allow water to get in the shell. Then they will get up, let them walk around the water, clean themselves. Then put them sideways the other way, like this. And then after you put them sideways the other way, it um, allows the water to seep into their shells. And then you put them back up, and you can let them walk around for a little bit. And you repeat that with every hermit crab. Then when you're done, you take the same container, dump out the water. I use the same because it's kind of wasteful if you don't. After you dump out the water, you take the towel. You lay it right on top of the cage. Like so. Then you push down in the middle to where you kind of have an indention. You take your hermit crab, you put it into the indention, like so. Sometimes people give them food if they're really wet. Then you take this side, or whatever side you have a little bit of extra slack on, and you cover them up just like so they so they can't escape. Just a little bit, kind of like, uh, like a little flap so they still have room. And give them a little flap over. And then you let them stay in there for, let's say, three minutes. When they're done, you can take them out, and they dry themselves off by themselves. So he's nice and dry. And then you can put him back in his cage. And then normally after you put him back in his cage, he'll go into his home and warm back up. Like that. Okay. Now, next thing you need. As you can see, I don't know if you noticed, I have two cords coming from the bottom of my cage. Each one is a heater. I have one heater that covers this half, and I have another one that covers that half. And I also have sand, like this. This kind of sand is, I need to show you, some. I don't have any more. It's actually crushed up co coconut shells, or almond shells. You can buy it at different pet stores, but it, you have to buy the crushed up almond shells because it gives a really good squishy kind of sand. See, it's kind of like almondy. It gives you a good squished up kind of sand, and it also absorbs heat, so hermit crabs can bury into the sand and then kind of be like it's almost like a blanket. So in this case, it's springtime and it's really hot outside, so I have no none of my heaters plugged in. Normally when it's fall, I'll plug in one, and winter, I'll plug in two, and then take one out like every, but during the daytime. And if it gets really cold, you can run them both 24-7. But if you have two of them and they cover the complete bottom of your cage, normally you're good. And one people, they make mistakes by putting a heat lamp like on the top of their cage. That's a problem because when you have a heat lamp, it dries out the crab. And that's not a really good thing, even if you do have water. The next thing you need is you need sponges. In this case, I have little sponges back there and right there. And um, those sponges you can buy at different pet stores. They're called hermit crab pillows. And those will suck up water and they act like a sponge. And some hermit crabs will actually like lay on the sponge like a pet. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> Another thing is, the last and final thing is, you need a temperature gauge, which in my case, and, well, a temperature and, not a heat gauge, um, uh, it, humidity cage, that's what it's called. You need one. In my case, I need to buy a new one, because my hermit crab thought it would be funny if he tore off the cover, ripped off the little pointy thing that goes... That tells you what it is. See? I don't know if you can see here. Okay. It just has a, it's just a little circle. It has nothing at all on it because my hermit crabs completely just ripped it, ripped it all apart, which I have no idea how they did that. 
So you kind of need to buy a good quality one when you do buy it. Because otherwise you're going to buy like one like every three weeks. You're going to buy another one because your hermit crab ripped it apart. And if the heat, you always want low to the ground. Stick it right about there. And this is a 10-gallon cage. So about halfway up the 10-gallon cage. And you need uh, the, um, what's it called? Humidity one on the top part like here. And you need the heat one down here. So you have, um, because if your immunity one is more, normally costs more money, so you want it higher so your hermit crabs can't get it. And the heat one doesn't cost as much money, but you, and you need it low, 100%, because if you don't have it low, then you don't get the accurate, accurate, I don't know how to say that, of, um, how hot or cold it is. Because if you have it up there, the only thing you're going to get is all the, outside air if you have it down there you're gonna get what the sand temperature is and that's what you need because that's what they're gonna be crawling around and burying in and that's the last thing you need to know there's only one thing that you have that you don't have to have is but most hermit crabs prefer a fairly good sized cage I have a 10 gallon cage a 10 gallon can hold about only five hermit crabs once you get um, a 20 gallon can hold about 10 and I think you get the pattern now normally you want to go with about per hermit crab is about it needs about a two gallons so if you have one hermit crab you need a two gallon cage if you have two hermit crabs you need a four gallon cage which I don't think they make if you have like so so on and so forth so that's how you take measure like their cage size and thank you bye this was hermit crab talk episode one